Artificial intelligence in science fiction is usually portrayed as a force for destruction, or as a program that helps facilitate space travel for an advanced species, either human or non-human. But in the real world, while these concerns are definitely on the minds of individuals working in the defense industry, cybernetics, quantum computers, and plenty of other industries worthy of their own buzzwords, these programs may also be making climate change worse. Which is probably not a good thing. We're going to take a look at why this is and what we might be able to do to stop it. But first, be sure to hit that like button, comment your favorite AI personality, shout out to Legion from Mass Effect, smash that subscribe button, check out the Patreon, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of the cyberpunk novel Ego Trip, and this is Science Get. By now, I'm certain that almost everyone watching this channel has learned what cryptocurrency is. And while we are certainly not going to be diving into the minefield that attempting to explain blockchain technology requires navigating, one thing is definitely easy to explain. The act of processing transactions and obtaining Bitcoin through the use of mining rigs, which has created a massive shortage of graphics cards and caused a lot of gamers to rage at the crypto market, uses a ton of electricity. The recent craze of minting NFTs is no different, as non-fungible tokens use the same blockchain ledger technology that Bitcoin and Ethereum do to mint tokens. It's been said that some NFTs require the same amount of energy that might be used to power a single EU resident's home over a period of four days. While there isn't a lot of information regarding the exact numbers and toll that this practice takes on the environment, it is certainly enough to illustrate that certain programs require more processing power, which causes the demand for electricity to go up, thereby increasing the carbon footprint of the machine executing that program. And I want to be clear here, because as an artist, NFTs interest me greatly. It's so exciting to see artists actually getting paid for their work for a change. but. And this is total speculation. Thank you, computer. I think it's not the fault of cryptocurrency, NFT artists, or artificial intelligence that these electricity costs are so damaging to the environment, but rather the infrastructure that requires that these technologies utilize a grid which relies heavily on fossil fuels to generate energy. But hey, that's just my slightly educated opinion. In any case, artificial intelligence can have a similar impact when the researchers and developers who create these programs go to teach them all the ins and outs of whatever job they were designed to perform. For example, researchers at the University of Massachusetts Amherst calculated the total demand to train their AI called Transformer at a staggering 626,000 pounds of CO2 equivalents. Researchers often lump all greenhouse gases under one umbrella term, CO2 equivalents, just in case you didn't know. To put this number in perspective, this is the same environmental impact of five American cars from their creation to the day that they get junked. Yikes. Though, to be clear, this figure is only for the biggest and baddest AIs on the planet, so not all of them have this impact. But it does make me think that maybe Skynet doesn't need to nuke the planet, that all it needs to do is simply exist to get rid of humanity. Which is slightly amusing. Can we greenlight that movie? The program we mentioned earlier, Transformer, is primarily used to subjugate the human race under Megatron's rule. Okay, no, I'm kidding. It's a language translation AI. And the researchers who developed it use a method called deep learning to bring it up to speed. Transformer analyzes text before summarizing or translating it. In recent years, the popularity of this form of AI has become incredibly popular. Deep learning produces AI that excels at identifying and matching patterns. But first, the system has to go through extensive training. For example, if a program like Transformer wanted to translate between English and Chinese, it would have to dig through millions or even billions of works that had been translated between those two languages. After it does this, though, it would be able to suggest its own translation. Thanks to this process, AIs are able to sift through tons of data at incredibly fast rates, allowing them to guide self-driving cars, recognize human faces, nightmare fuel, 
and even identify cancer in medical photographs. This is incredibly useful technology, capable of simultaneously saving and improving lives. But we have to be honest about the cost, because if we do that, then we can better improve the infrastructure that all of our machines utilize. Like cryptocurrency, the process of deep learning requires the use of hundreds of graphics processor units, or GPUs for the uninitiated, which are the same pieces of hardware used for rendering video games, also for the uninitiated. The longer these GPUs run, the greater the energy demands on the grid, and the more carbon emissions, or CO2 equivalents, get released into our atmosphere. Most deep learning is done at data processing centers, and these places account for as much as 1% of the entire world's energy usage, 2% in the US of A. While the development of artificial intelligence is definitely something that is overall beneficial to humanity, unless the robots enslave us all, computational linguists like Emily M. Bender argue that the environmental impact from artificial intelligence is already large enough that it's worth stopping and thinking about. Bender, no, not that one who works at the University of Seattle, has been watching the data and the discussion on the impact of machines on the environment for some time. Together with a group of experts at Google, she's attempting to sound the alarm. In March of 2021, she and her team wrote a paper which warns that AI language models are just getting too big, asking whether or not this constant escalation of energy demands is even necessary and whether or not it's possible to make the technology more efficient. Another disturbing thing that the team pointed out is that artificial intelligence seems to benefit wealthier families and individuals more, while people who live in poverty may be the most vulnerable to the harmful effects of climate change, especially when it comes to disasters that are a direct result of those changes to the climate. Here's where things get ugly for Google, though. Because even before this paper came out, Google asked, and I put that in quotes, their employees to remove their names from it. When Timot Gebru, co-leader of Google's AI ethics team, refused to do so, they just fired her, which is some seriously bad optics for Google. But what's probably worse is that immediately after this, they announced that they would be producing their biggest and baddest AI language model yet, which would feature as many as 1.6 trillion parameters. The measure for the size of any given deep learning model is how many parameters it features. And these parameters are what allow an AI model to identify patterns. Transformer, which is one of the world's largest AI language models, has 213 million parameters. If Transformer's environmental impact is cause for concern for people like Timot Gebru and Emily M. Bender, then what does that say about this new, even bigger and more badass language model? Not good things, at least from where I'm sitting. While the climate impact is not particularly massive, Roy Swartz, a computer scientist at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, Israel, suggests that studies like what Bender and Gebru have conducted are raising some extremely important questions, and that he sees a troubling trend in the increase in emissions during training and AI model use. Another researcher at Mila, an AI institute in Montreal, Canada, Sasha Luciano, agrees, stating that the recent trend in the rapid growth of language models, like Transformer, to be concerning. Typically, the amount of energy that's consumed in the operation or training of an AI is almost entirely ignored. The only thing that seems to matter is how accurate and quickly they complete tasks. This has led to coining the term red AI, meaning that it is not efficient in terms of energy and CO2 equivalents. Directly contrasting this term, green AI is focused on increasing a model like Transformers' overall efficiency, aiming for getting the same results that red AI get without you know, killing the planet in the process. It's important to note that engineers don't have to shrink their model in order to achieve this goal. Computer processing is complex, and engineers are always finding ways to use less computing power without cutting the number of parameters their AIs require. And as my old boss, KC, always said, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Okay, I'm sorry. That was a terrible impression of him. Hope he's not watching this video. Thankfully though, these researchers are definitely not alone in asking these important questions. A new annual workshop for AI developers is attempting to organize like-minded engineers into producing simpler, more efficient AI language models. Wolf Anthony and Benjamin Kanding, students at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark, have teamed up to create a useful new tool that helps AI developers estimate the environmental toll that their AI takes on the earth before they even begin training them. And maybe, just maybe, 
Yeah, thanks computer. We can use the same approach with cryptocurrency and NFT art too. And hey, if it's already being done, it can't hurt, right? If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that like button and comment below how you think we can make AI better, both in terms of its benefits to all of humanity and its ecological impact. Be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Get, and check out the Patreon, where you can get early episodes of the show, short science fiction horror and dark fantasy stories, audiobooks, and your name in the credits. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.